In this video, I'm gonna be giving you seven of my best tips that you may not have heard of before. These are gonna make your life easier on the bank and help you catch more fish. All the way from why you shouldn't be using pop-ups in a PVA bag to why you should be using inline leads with zigs. My first tip is, rather controversially, don't use pop-ups in solid PVA bags. Now I see a lot of people promoting using a proper pop-up in a PVA bag, and I see a lot of anglers on the bank doing it as well. And don't get me wrong, it works, it will catch fish, but I believe you will catch more by using a critically balanced hook bait that is balanced under the weight of the hook than on pop-ups. So let me demonstrate what I mean. So I've got a pop-up rig here, a Ronnie rig uh, in, in this instance, that's on a small braid, a short braided hook link, and obviously an inline lead, which we all should be using with solid bags. So you've got your pellets here, that's what it's gonna sort of look like on the bottom. Now, if you've got a pop-up, that's gonna be sitting up here. That's maybe an inch away from the pellets, depending on how high you have your pop-up, but with a runny rig, yeah, you've got it about an inch away. Now, what I believe is when a carp feeds on a, on a solid bag, it is not going for the hook bait. Just had a liner. <laughs> when a carp feeds on a solid PVA bag, it is not going for the hook bait. It's going for that pellet. It wants to suck in the whole of that pellet all in one, one big go. And if you've got a hook bait that's sitting up here, it's gonna miss it. It's gonna come in straight down on those pellets and it, it, the, the pop-up is gonna be sort of out of the mouth. It's not gonna go into the carp's mouth. Of course, sometimes it will do, depending on the angle that the fish comes from, but I believe that you will catch more on a critically balanced hook bait. So that's what I'm gonna show you. So this is more akin to what I like using. It's a tiny, tiny hook bait and it sinks ever so slowly under the weight of the hook. And so if we redo the scenario, that is going to sit right on top of those pellets and it's going to go up when the rest of those pellets go up inside the carp's mouth. That carp is going to come straight down onto those pellets and it can't miss the hook bait. If the hook bait's up here, there is a good chance that it will miss it. But if it's down in amongst those pellets, even if you use a bottom bait, I think you're giving yourself a better chance than with a pop-up. And I think it's worth probably demonstrating this underwater as well. So here it is illustrated perfectly in the water bucket. You've got the presentation that's furthest away from me, which is the pop-up in the solid bag and that's just sitting way too proud for me. I believe them fish are gonna be coming in, sucking up those, those pellets, and by the time they already get to the bag and suck those pellets up, they've gone past the pop-up, and that's not gonna be flying up with the rest of the pellets. The presentation that's closest to me with the small pop-up that's sunk just under the weight of the hook, that's only sitting ever so slightly on top of those pellets, and when the carp comes in, it's gonna be sucking up all of the pellets and the hook bait all in one and you're going to be nailing it. So I've come to Hintlesham Fishery in Suffolk to do these tips today and when I got here, the fishery manager, don't go in this tree please, said this margin over here is always good in the winter 
and, uh, and it's worth a bet having one rod on a zig. And I've looked down this margin and you can see with the Polaroids, a few fish, two, three foot under the surface. So it looked absolutely prime for a zig and it's produced a bite, which is great. And actually my next tip is if you can, or if you don't need to drop the lead, use an inline lead when fishing zigs. Now the reason for that is when you're using a lead clip, if you're not dropping the lead, that lead bounces about a lot in the fight and that can cause probably more hook pulls than you usually get. Zigs are known for a hook pull and that lead bouncing about, I believe causes more hook pulls than, than the fair share. And when you've got an inline lead, it can't bounce. All it does is swing. And for me, that means that I'm gonna get less hook pulls. Also, when you're using multiple rods, they don't wipe out your other rods as much as what a leg clip does. If you think you've got that big long hook link and then the lead swinging down on a swivel, that's gonna catch on the other lines a lot easier than what an inline is because you haven't got that swivel for the line to get caught on. So generally the line just gen gently tightens up and then pings off and comes back round. Whereas with a swivel lead, it can cause all sorts of dramas. Um, as I can see right now, the lead's just swinging about. It's not bouncing at all. Uh, why have you done that? Why have you done that? Oh, he's in. <laughs> oh, he's like trying to get under my net and all sorts, but we've got it in. And that is my first ever Hintlesham carp. Lovely. So before I get that fish out to show you, I just thought I'd illustrate the point that I'm talking about. So this is my inline setup. I've got my main line straight through to the inline lead with the insert inside it, which makes sure that there's absolutely no tangles around the back of the lead. If I pull it out there, you've just got a quick change swivel and then an anti-tangle sleeve out the back to my zig hook link. And as the fish is pulling on that weight, you can see all it's doing is just moving back and forth. Whereas with a leg clip setup, this is a standard leg clip setup. And if you imagine the lead hasn't dropped and the fish is pulling about or pulling it, that lead is moving about, bouncing all the time. And that's just jolting that hook hold more and more and more. And that's why I believe just going with the inline setup is far, far better. So there is my zig prize. I have to say, after having a look along that margin, I didn't expect there to be one this sort of size in here because everything that I've been seeing has been 20, or well, at least a high double 20 plus, and they go to over 35 pounds in here. <laughs> but on a January day, you can't complain with getting bites. So like I said, this was on a zig and the hook bait was a maggot tipped zig rig and that is my next tip to tip your it's a tip to tip your hook bait on a zig with maggots especially late winter early spring So for some of you, it might not be the first time that you've heard about tipping a zig rig with maggots, but I think that still a lot of people don't do it. And it is particularly effective when using shorter zigs, when fishing your zig rigs in say the bottom half rather than the top half of the water. For whatever reason, just having that extra little bit of visual aid or movement or whatever it is from those maggots on that zig in the bottom layers seems to work really, really well. 
I remember a session with Tom Maker where he was using short zigs. He had caught one in 24 hours. I was out there filming with him and he swapped in the second 24 hours to tipping his zigs off with three or four maggots and it literally transformed the session and the rest of the session he went on to catch eight fish and that was in February, so pretty tough conditions. Now, what I've been using today is just a very standard normal zig rig uh, and I've got a food bait pop-up on there that's a Pacific tuna pop-up in 10 mil and then I've just tipped it with with four maggots now the reason I've gone for that setup today is because on this fishery you're not allowed to use artificial hook baits so I can't use foam inside a zigger liner however if you're using a zigger liner on your fishery then you can still do it and you can still attach those maggots to the back of the foam. Now, to attach maggots to any rig, all you need is bait floss and a green fine baiting needle. You can use a normal sewing needle. However, I find I lose sewing needles like anything. So this one with a nice green end is absolutely fine for me. So to attach the maggots to the zig, all you need to do is pierce five or six onto your fine baiting needle. Then you slide those off of the baiting needle onto the bait floss. To attach it to a standard hair rig type zig rig, all you need to do is slide your hook bait on and then thread into the rest of the loop on your hair the bait floss and tie it off with two double overhand granny knots. Then simply slide your bait so it buffs up against the maggots. To do it with a zigger liner, all you have to do is thread your baiting needle underneath the loop on the aligner, hook on your bait floss to the needle, thread it back through and finish in exactly the same way. Two double granny knots, snip off the tag ends and you're good to go. So there you go, tipping off your zigs with maggots is a great little edge, particularly when the fish are not feeding very hard and they're sitting in those bottom layers of the water column. Ooh. What's that? Is it like a, it's like a little tiny carp. Yeah, look at that, it's tiny. That must be one that's like spawned on in the lake. Look at that, oh, it's jet black. Well, I didn't expect to be playing anything this small today. Look at that. Well, that was bizarre. I've had a, had a bite on one of my rods on the bottom and sort of thinking it's a tench, not really quite knowing what's going on. And um, it's a, I don't know, three pound carp. And I'm not sure, I don't believe that they've stocked any of this sort of size in here. So I guess it might be one that's spawned on or something like that. Again, I've seen some really decent fish over there, like 20s, maybe even 30s. Um, I feel like I'm being a little bit unlucky on the size today, but it doesn't really matter. Getting bites, having fun. And this is a banger, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm not sure that's what specimen lake one is uh, is renowned for <laughs> i'm sure it's much bigger fish than this but nice to be getting a little bit of action in the winter and i'm sure that this one is going to grow on to be an absolute banger and probably one of the main targets in this lake in 15 years he is absolutely gorgeous so this tip isn't necessarily going to change the world. However, it could make wrapping up a little bit easier for some of you. Now, usually when I see most people wrapping up and what I've done for many, many years is to stand maybe nine or 10 feet away from the sticks and then go round them like so. And the line picks up off of the rod tip. Now, what I was shown by one of our French consultants who happens to be in the French national team is to stand in the middle of your wrapping stick. So long as you've got enough room around you, stand in the middle and do it that way. And then you bring your rod right round 180 degrees, drop the rod down, it picks up the line around the stick and it just makes it a little 
bit easier. Because you're coming from a position of height already, it's just easy to drop that line down either side of the stick and wrap up like that. Like I said, not necessarily going to change the world, but could make wrapping up easier for you. So next up, I'm going to be talking about spodding and in particular, spodding in a crosswind. Now this is my usual spodding setup, X5 spod rod and a reel filled with braid and a shock leader. Now this is absolutely perfect for 90% of my spodding, but sometimes when you're fishing on a on a big open expanse of water and you've got a big wind coming in across this braid simply won't cut it quite it just gets caught in the wind really really bows out and you'll be landing that spawn well well short of where you're fishing that's why I do carry with me, and it might sound a little bit blasé carrying a spare spod rod, but if you carry a spare spool of line or a spare reel that's got mono on it, it will get you out of trouble when you need to spod in a crosswind. For some reason, probably the profile of the mono, it just cuts through the air and cuts through that wind a lot, lot better. It doesn't bow out nearly as much as what braid does, and it will get that spawn to the spot much better in a crosswind than what braid does. On here, I've just got the 10 pound Exocet, which is absolutely perfect. Teamed it up with a 30 pound Armadillo leader, and that is what I use when the wind gets up on big lakes. So this winter, the vast majority of my carp have either come from areas of structure or from really undercut banks. I've been fishing smaller lakes with quite deep margins and these lakes always tend to have an area or a number of areas where the banks are really undercut. And I'm talking, you know, three, four foot back where the carp have dug about underneath the bank and just scoured it out. And it's a little home for them. And normally when you're fishing up to, the, up to these areas, you're either casting as tight as you possibly can, you might be shipping a pole up to it, you might be dropping a bait boat up to it, but where you've got the bank, you're, the closest you can land is there. However, what I've been doing this winter is putting a bait here. And how I've been doing that is simply by either casting over to the area that I'm fishing or if it's along my margin, been walking the rod down and been using a bait spoon just on a landing net handle to poke it right under the bank. So I put my rig in, put a small amount of, um, I've t generally tended to use either sweet corn or maggots this year, and then it is a simple case of shipping the pole out and what you want to do is get your hands further out to the water and you want to get that pole to go underneath the bank, basically. So I'm just going in the water there now. I'm really keeping my arms out as far as possible and that rig is pretty much under the bank there now. Twisting the pole, dropping it down and yeah, that's a rig that's that much closer to where the fish are living than what you could do in any other form of, of dropping your rig. And um, yeah, I, I believe it's got me extra bites because sometimes those fish just are not willing to come out from under those undercut banks. Rapid PVA bags. Now, it might not be a revolution to any of you, but this really is my best and easiest edge for tying solid bags. These really do make life a lot, lot easier. And I'm still, these have been out for eight years, I think, and I still see people on the bank struggling to tie PVA bags with the normal PVA tapeway. Honestly, if you start using this, you just need to get into the swing of it, have a few practice goes and you will be away. So to tie up a rapid solid bag, all you have to do is follow these steps. Locking collar onto the loading tool. PVA bag onto the loading tool, locking collar off. A few pellets in the bottom of the bag, drop the rig in on top, hold your leader in the V. 
a few more pellets, lead down on top, more pellets until the bag is just over half full. There is a mark on the loading tool where the PVA needs to come up to and with a good gap between the PVA loading tool and the pellets, twist. Push the loading tool back over the pellets, lick around the PVA that's remaining on the tool, continue to push over and the PVA will adhere to itself. Then simply fold in the corners for maximum aerodynamics. So there is the finished bag, really aerodynamic, will cast like a dream and is quicker and easier to tie than being all fingers and thumbs with PVA tape. Now I know some of you who may have used the PVA bags maybe three or four years ago may have noticed some had an interesting taste. Now that is because a batch that was made in particularly humid conditions had a stabiliser put into it and until it reached the shops we did not realise that there was a problem with the taste so some of those PVA bags did reach it onto the market but I can assure you that any PVA bag since then tastes like absolutely nothing, has no taste whatsoever and I will prove it to you now by eating this one. Mmm, lovely. It literally doesn't taste of anything, but it's a bit sticky. I'm going to spit it out now, just because it's gluing my mouth together. So I hope this little amalgamation of tips goes some way to making your life a little bit easier on the bank, or putting more fish on the bank for you. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure if you're not already subscribed to the channel, click subscribe, leave me a comment, and I'll see you again soon.